Psalm 63. O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. So, friends, this is a message that is so appropriate for us today, having come here very early in the morning. You know, we have to seek the Lord early in the morning. That's why he said that earnestly I seek you, but we need to seek the Lord early in the morning. Uh, many times, friends, uh, we spend the morning doing things other than worshiping the Lord. Uh, but uh, we are commanded here to seek the Lord early, especially in a dry and weary land where there is no water. See, friends, today we are experiencing special uh, weather. A few days ago it was so hot, and yet rain came yesterday. And will rain come again today and tomorrow? We said that no. In that area where we are going today for our camping, it will not rain. But all the other areas, friends, uh, the Lord will just allow uh, the rain to come. And so I said that if such is the case, where it is dry, where there is no water, and yet there is a weary soul, so how can we encourage? How can we encourage those people? Friends, there is just one way, and that is to seek the Lord early. Amen. We have to seek the Lord. It is as if we long for that water. You know, in Psalm 42, we, are dis we were dis given a good description, friends, of the longing of a weary soul. A longing of a thirsty soul. That's why we have that song, a beautiful song also, that was lifted from this verse. And that is in verse 42, verse one, chapter 42 Psalms, verse 1. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. See, you just want the water. You just want to be nourished and to be refreshed by that water. And we are reminded, friends, of Psalm 23, where the Lord will lead us into quiet waters to refresh us, to restore our soul. Because, friends, when you are going through those difficult times, when you are in that area, friends, where there is no water, but always all kinds of problems and temptations you face day in and day out, how you wish to be delivered, how you wish to be refreshed by the word of the Lord, by the presence of God. And so here comes the, uh, David now saying that, earnestly I seek you, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my body longs for you. See the, the, the yearning here of wanting to be touched by the Lord, not only in our soul where we are burdened with all kinds of problems that, that uh, we face every day, but also the physical body. See, my body longs for you, Lord. How I long that you touch my body. And I pray, friends, that even as we go through life, as we go through all the trials of this life, that the Lord will always be there to sustain us to strengthen us and to touch us in a special way, restoring us. He said that, yes, I will lead you to quiet water, and yet I also lead you to green pasture. So that is our Savior, our Lord. And <clears throat> we say, friends, that there are good reasons for us to seek the Lord early. In Psalm 35, verse 3, we are given one good reason to seek the Lord early. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. So Psalm 5 verse 3 says that in the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. So. Friends, the Lord hears our voice early in the morning, not late in the evening, not late in the day, but early in the morning. See that you hear my voice. You know why? Because he mentioned about things here. Verse 4, you are not a God who takes pleasure in evil. With you, the wicked cannot dwell. 
So we are told here, friends, that there is something that can worry us during the day. So that God will not even hear our prayers. You know why God wants to hear prayers? Well, we are given a good, uh, a good reason in uh, Isaiah 59 verse 2. We are told that it is sin that separates us from God so that he does not hear. So early in the morning when you just woke up so fresh, you have not committed any sin yet. You have not uttered any word yet that could defile you, that could cause you to sin. That's the best time for you to pray to God. That's the best time for us to offer to God our prayers and our petitions and wait in expectation. The best time, friends, early in the morning. When you are not yet disturbed in your spirit. When you are so, so fresh coming uh, just from your bed early in the morning. Because before you went to bed that night, before, uh, the night before, you prayed. You asked God for forgiveness for all the sins that you have committed during that day. And so God gave you a good night rest. And so because of that, friends, early in the morning you are so fresh. And your prayers will be answered. Amen. Because we are told that God will hear our prayers in the morning. In the morning I lay my request before you and wait in expectations. So when we pray, let us wait in expectation. You have the whole day to wait. But how about praying at night? How much time left for you to wait for the blessing of the Lord? Supposing you, you pray late in the day, how much time left? Not much time, friends. That's why we sometimes we rush. That's why sometimes we put things into our own hands. We try to solve our problem with our own strength. Because we just don't have the time left to wait. But if we pray, come in the morning, pray to God, offer to God our petitions and our requests, we have the whole day, friends, to wait. And many times, friends, God, he, it won't take him long to answer our prayers. So it is good for us to come early in the morning to pray. Amen. In Proverbs 8, verse 17, again, we are told here, I love those who love me, and those who seek me, find me. In the King James Version, again, I love those who love me, and those who seek me early will find me. So if we seek the Lord early, we will find him. Before we go into the hustle and bustle of, uh, of the day, all the, all the problems of the day, friends, we find him. Because once we start our daily grind, our daily activities, friends, let me tell you, we can get lost into those activities. And that's why many times we say that, okay, I'll read my 10 chapters later. That later will be very late at night, not a few minutes later. No. Because once we get into the activities of the day, then we are too busy. There is no more time to commune with God. There is no more time to, de to devote to God because now we are too busy. That's why we are told that those who seek me early will find me. Amen. That's why we have the saying, early birds get the worm. So we have to wake up early, do the work early, and we get the blessing early. Amen. See, if you wait late in the day, late in the day that you do all this, well, friends, you will get into all kinds of problems. We have to be very early in the morning, friends. Otherwise, nothing will be left for us. Just to go to a buffet, and the food is there set, everything. Friends, if you are not fast enough to go on the line, you might find yourself at the end of the line with no food left for you when you get to the table. So we have to be very early and, and set our hearts serving the Lord. Amen? That's why I said that 
I lay my request in the morning. Because I find you, you will bless me. So let us not uh, again uh, lay back in uh, our service. We got to do the, the work of the Lord uh, seriously and do it early. Amen. And of course, uh, there is so much joy and expectation in the morning. That's why in Psalm 30, verse 5, we are given this good reason again to be early in seeking the Lord. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. You know, sometimes we just can't wait for the morning to come. We just can't wait for the morning to come. You know why? Because here we are given a good description here. Weeping can remain for the night. You will be so burdened. And how you wish that morning would come. Why? Because in the morning, you shall be rejoicing. We are told, friends, that the faithfulness of the Lord is fresh. It is new every morning. See, a day has gone, a new day has come. New opportunities. Every morning, friends, when you wake up, don't think about what happened yesterday so that you will be burdened again. No, think about the future. Think, again, think about what is ahead of us. Don't think about what happened yesterday and keep lamenting for what happened yesterday. Oh, how I wish that I did this. Oh, why did I do that? Well, it's done. You cannot reverse it, friends. But it is good to confine it to history. That should no longer be your current event. Your current event should be life now and life in the future. What is past is past. You cannot reverse it. The words that you have uttered, it's gone. You cannot take it back. If there is damage done, it's done. The only thing that we can do now, friends, is to live this life in this current time and make right before God. And when we are able to make right before God, friends, everything else He will make right before us. So let us not confine ourselves to those situations where there is regret that you, how you wish that you did something else rather than doing the things that you did. No. Look forward. Amen. Yes, weeping can remain for the night. There will be a lot of struggle for the night. But remember, the morning is coming. And in the morning, we are told that there is rejoicing in the morning. For his anger lasts only a moment. And you know that moment, friends? It is only for the night. It is only for the night. There is forgiveness. There is restoration. The following day, we are fresh. Amen? Are you not glad when you wake up in the morning that you have this life again? Many times in the past, friends, I told you, the most vulnerable time in our life is when we are sleeping at night. We are completely helpless. You cannot help yourself when you are sleeping at night. Nobody can help themselves while they are sleeping at night. It is only by the grace of God that you are able to wake up in the morning. It's just by the grace of God, friends, that we are able to wake up in the morning. When we are sleeping at night, you, cannot, you are so defenseless. You are so helpless. You cannot shield yourself against any attack while you are sleeping at night. And because we are so helpless, we are so hopeless at night. That's the best time, friends, for the, work, for the Lord to work in our lives. That's why when we are sick, it is night time that the Lord works wonder. When we cannot resist His, work, His hands, when we are completely surrendered to the Lord at night, when you cannot do anything, when you don't have to take your medicine, when you don't have to resist this, when you don't have to do that, 
when you are completely so helpless, so rendered to the Lord, that God will do wonders. That's why old people in the past, my grandparents in the past would say, go to bed now. You will feel better in the morning. Because it is at night, friends, that God will work wonders in our lives. So when we are having troubles, and you consider that a night time, friends, the best time to surrender your life is when you are in deep trouble. And say, God, I am in deep trouble. I won't move. I just want to surrender my life. Remember, friends, the morning is coming. Amen. In the morning, there is rejoicing. In the morning, you could feel the presence of the Lord in a special way that you don't look back to the, back, to the past where you shall mourn again. No. It says rejoicing in the morning. Amen. So that should be our attitude. That should be our attitude. Whatever sickness you have, whether physical sickness, emotional sickness, financial sickness, or physical sickness, rest in the Lord. Amen. No wonder Jesus said, Come unto me, you who are weary and are heavily laden, and I give you rest. Rest to your soul. So we have to go to the Lord. That we may have rest. And when we are rested in the Lord, then He will do wonders. Friends, don't discount the power of the Lord. <clears throat> Many times, friends, we believe what we, He can do in our lives. We thought that we can do better. We thought that we can help Him. That's why a lot of people, you know, do what they do. Believers acting as, like unbelievers. Because they cannot believe that if they only wait a little bit more, God will do wonders. They cannot believe. And so meantime, they said that, oh well, God will only help those who will help themselves. Well, how can you help yourself? It's not by doing anything you want to do. Help yourself, friends, by establishing a good relationship with the Lord where you can walk by faith. When you can trust Him fully. Not trusting in yourself. Because I have seen a lot of people, they have tried to help themselves. And yet they failed. Because they help themselves the wrong way. If we want to help ourselves, friends, let's help ourselves be faithful to God. The best thing that we can ever do. So we had to seek the Lord early. You know, when we were still young as a church, maybe two years old, three years old, we used, to, we used to spend time in the morning at the park. I don't know if you, those that uh, were with us in the past, is, is you still remember that, those days, when that we call a morning watch. Not a lot of us would go there, but uh, we went to Thompson Park early in the morning. A morning watch or dawn watch. We would just wait for the sun to come. On an Easter Sunday morning, we would go to Thompson Park and wait for the, rise, the sun to rise. And we would just praise before God, and then from there we go to church. Friends, seeking the Lord early is the best. Amen. And let's wait for the morning, friends. Yeah. God had so much in store for us. That's why sometimes we can't wait. You know, the children, they just can't wait for them to become... Uh, uh, youth to become YA and later on to have their own family. See, they look forward. There's so much blessings waiting for us in those stages in life. Amen. So we get to do that. Wait patiently. He said we are to wait patiently before the Lord. And that's why in 100, uh, Psalm 130, this should be our attitude, friends. Psalm 130, verse 6. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. 
My soul waits for the Lord. I pray that we will all wait. Amen. We will yearn and expect great things happening in the morning. Amen. So when you remember on Sunday morning, be expectant. I want to go to church. No, nothing can hinder me. Nothing can stop me. Not the preparation for the camp. Yes, we are going to the camp. Family come today. But not the preparation for the camp will stop me from going to church early. No, I want to go. I want to worship the Lord. There's something good. There's something beautiful waiting for me in the house of the Lord. Amen. That should be our attitude. That's why in Psalm 6, 36, or, or 63, the one that we read earlier, if we read on, I have seen you, verse 2, Psalm 63, verse 2, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. Amen. Because the love of the Lord is better than life. My lips will glorify you, Lord. I will behold your glory and your power. So friends, verse 6 we are told, On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. So even in bed, I, say, I think of you. Do you ever think of the Lord while you're in bed? That is the best attitude. See, a lot of people, they call me, say, Pastor, I can't sleep tonight. Why can't you not sleep? No, I am burdened. I am burdened. That's why I can sleep tonight. Well, friends, you are thinking about your problem. That's why you can sleep that night. If you want, then think about the Lord. Amen. Think about His goodness. Think about His faithfulness. Think about what he had, he had done in the past. And think about what He can do to you today. Think about those things, friends, and He will give you a good night rest, a good night sleep. It will be a sound sleep. Friends, at night, I sleep soundly. I sleep soundly at night. My wife complains. And those that will be staying near my tent tonight, you would know that I sleep soundly tonight. Amen. If you wish, friends, bring an earplug. <laughs> That's how, how, how soundly I sleep at night, friends. Let me tell you. The moment my back is, hits uh, the, the, the bed, that's it. Uh, better, if you want, friends, better go to bed early. Because if I go to bed earlier than you, then you will be in trouble. Amen. And so, friends, I say that we got to seek the Lord early. Amen. And we are here today, early, on a Sunday morning, so fresh, the Lord is here. Amen. So again, what are the reasons why we have to sing the Lord early? He hears our voice early in the morning. Amen. No distraction, no sin to come to distract our connection with the Lord yet. And then second, we, what did he say? Proverbs 8, 17. We say that the second thing that we, we do is we, when we seek the Lord, we find Him if we seek Him early. Before we are crowded with the busyness of this world. Before we are distracted by our daily activities, we seek the Lord early and we find Him. And you know, friends, in that, in, in that Proverbs 8, there's something good there. Verse 34, Proverbs 8. This is something good when we, see, when we find the Lord. We are told that if we seek Him early, we find Him. Verse 34, Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. 
And then verse 35, For whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. So let us seek the Lord. Let's find the Lord. Because once we find him, we receive favor from the Lord. Verse 36, But whoever fails to find me harms himself. All who hate me love death. So let's not miss the Lord. We come early, we find him, he said that we will receive favor from the Lord. And the third reason is that there is a rejoicing in the morning waiting for us. So if you want to rejoice early, then wake up early. If you want to rejoice at night, it's too late. You have been burdened during the day. Wake up early. Rejoice early. And we know, friends, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So that the whole day, we shall have the strength of the Lord. Let's stand up. Let's pray.